Hey guys, so I am an educator at Unacademy and you can follow me over there if you are interested to watch videos on basic concepts of chemistry or physical chemistry topics. You can also recommend this to your juniors and to your younger siblings, right? All you need to do is download the Unacademy learning app and watch my videos over there. Now let's just begin with our topic. So a very good evening to you guys. Today we are going to talk about our Kumada reaction, okay? So till now we have studied a lot of reactions. Uh, most of them are palladium catalyzed cross coupling reactions. Today we are going to study about Kumada reaction. Now one different aspect of Kumada reaction from all, all other coupling reactions is that mostly it uses nickel phosphine complexes as a catalyst. Okay, it uses nickel phosphine complex. So till now what we have studied that palladium uh, you know catalyzes most of the coupling reactions. But in this particular example, nickel is the you know the main catalyst. Even palladium can catalyze these reactions, but um, you know mainly nickel is used as a um, as a catalytic uh, you can say catalyst, uh, which basically helps in carrying out the reaction. Okay, so we basically the requirement over here one different requirement over here is that Grignard reagents are required. Okay, so in this particular reaction, what do we have? Grignard reagents, right? The Grignard reagents and vinyl or aryl halide. So these are the basic differences of Kumada reaction from other coupling reactions like in Suzuki we studied about orga or organoboranes in Hihama we studied about organosilanes and they were all palladium catalyzed reactions in Sonogoshira we did not require any organoborane or any you know any kind of compound we just re required simple alkynes and aryl or vinyl halides along with copper as an oxidant right so these are some of the uh, differences between the different coupling reactions over here we are using Grignard reagent and vinyl or aryl halide so i hope all of you know what is a grignard reagent and so basically the, let's say we have a alkyl or uh, you know aryl or vinyl halide and this is a grignard reagent we use a nickel phosphine complex and we get this rnr bond along with mg x x dash okay depending on what this x x dash is it could be mgcl2 it could be mgbr2 right it could be any compound so the here are a few examples so you see this is a 13 dichlorobenzene right and along with that we have a Grignard reagent over here we are using our nickel catalyst uh, so this NiCl2 DP is a very common catalyst and it's known as dichloro 12 bis diphenyl phosphino ethane nickel this is the complex you can see the structure um, so we have two phosphorus groups attached to the nickel this is, this is the whole structure of this NiCl2 DPE group okay and this is the name diphenyl phosphino ethane and then we reflux that means we heat it at 20 hours for 20 hours in ether and you can see both the, the both the positions have been substituted so at both the positions we have got our c4h9 group and a carbon carbon coupling reaction has taken place similarly if we have a vinyl halide along with that we are using our grignard reagent and the same things but over here the temperature instead of um, you know of, instead of refluxing uh, we are doing it at a very low temperature and this is the solvent system that is 2 is to 3 is to 1 ratio of ether benzene and thf and we get a really good yield 80 percent of the compound and you can see uh, you know this um, this group has there's a carbon carbon bond that has formed and this is our product that is generated okay now coming on to the mechanism the mechanism is similar to the ones that we have studied till now uh, if you just focus over here we have nickel in zero oxidation state the first step is oxidative addition that is your uh, you know if, if r1 is a aryl group and x is a halide so it gets inserted between this uh, r1 and x so you can see the nickel changes from plus 0 to plus 2 so basically the oxidative addition step takes place and then followed by transmetallation where your grignard reagent is there so once you add this grignard reagent this r2 r2 group gets substituted and it gets attached to our, uh, to our nickel and the x group gets substituted and it gets attached to our mg okay so let's say if we are taking our mg br okay if we are taking our mg br and the aryl halide is also br let's say if the aryl halide is this one bromobenzene okay let's say the aryl halide is bromobenzene so that means this x group is also bromine and the one that we are using the grignard reagent let's say it's our mg R M G B R R two M G B R so then both are B R right so if M if M G X Y is eliminated M G X Y is nothing but M G B R two okay this M G X Y is nothing but M G B R two so it depends on the substrate what is our aryl halide and what is our Grignard reagent that is what that, what we are adding and accordingly the byproduct will be formed so this X and Y depends on which halogens we have both could be C L also if you are taking R R two M G C L 
and we are taking chlorobenzene then MgCl2 will be eliminated right so finally what we get we get this complex over here and then the step 3 all of you know reductive elimination where the nickel gets removed between the carbon carbon bonds and finally we get a reductive elimination product right but this uh, mechanism is highly criticized there are a lot of other mechanisms that have been proposed like a group found out that nickel is actually existing in all three states that is nickel is existing in plus one oxidation state also in plus two oxidation state also and in plus three oxidation state also when this reaction is going on right so according to them they they see this mechanism as flawed or it might be that the mechanism is very complex and they have just tried to simplify it right uh, so there have lot there has there has been a lot of controversy a lot of criticism regarding this mechanism But like I told you all the coupling reactions have been following a similar mechanism So it is best for us and it's best for people in general to to study this mechanism in case you want to go into deep and want to study the mechanism I guess I'll, I'll give you a link to a few research papers down in the description box You can go ahead and read that and find out what exactly are they trying to convey, right? Coming on to some uh, modern Kumada reactions. So in 2014, you can see uh, two, two research papers were reported in JOC and organic letters. That is, it's commonly called as OL. And uh, in you can see that, the, you know, at room temperature also the Kumada reaction has been carried out. So if you see over here, uh, this takes about, you know, it, it's done at a very, you know, reflux means it's heated, okay. And this reaction is happening. Basically, what we are having is a difluoro compound and we are adding our Grignard reagent and you can see both the fluoro groups get substituted okay so this is the reaction over here but if you see this is regard this is by using our palladium tetrakist tri sorry tri palladium tetrakist triphenyl phosphine right but on the right hand if you see we have NiCl2 DPPE okay and we are just adding 4%, four mole percent and at room temperature itself this reaction goes and th this gives us this, pro this particular product so over here it actually it beats the, your palladium catalyst in carrying out the reaction so you can see the very you know the very high efficiency of nickel catalyst as well it's not just palladium catalyst if you're able to optimize other metals as well you can extract even better uh, you know results from other metals not just palladium but in, like in this case you can see it's nickel right so these these are some of the synthesis this is synthesis of diflunicel okay it's a medicinal chemistry compound and uh, what we have again a Grignard reagent and then we have uh, you know we have 1,3 difluoro and uh, then we have bromo at the ortho position you can see this compound over here we can use anything we can use nickel catalyst also we can use palladium catalyst also and now over here bromo is getting substituted because bromo is you can say is more reactive towards these reactions I've, or, I've already mentioned the order also like it's first iodine then bromine then chlorine then fluorine right so bromine will be replaced and you can see the this bromine is replaced and this MgBr group is replaced. So our, our byproduct is going to be MgBr2, right? In this case, our byproduct is going to be MgBr2. And finally, what we are going to get is your carbon-carbon bond over here. You can see the bromo gets replaced and we get a carbon-carbon bond over here. Similarly, you can see over here synthesis of Ag341, which is again an inhibitor, a medicinal chemistry compound. And you are adding CH3MgBr, palladium catalyst you are using. And you can see there's an iodine over here so what is going to happen the ch3 group is going to replace this iodine and we get our this product over here why couldn't we simply use grignard reagent because if we had simply used grignard reagent the ch3 would have actually attacked this carbonyl carbon as well it would have attacked this carbonyl carbon and would it would have led to you know many side reactions and we would have got you know the ring opening of the this particular amide bond so there are a lot of problems with you simply using Grignard reagent that is why the whole coupling reaction process was you know it came into the picture now this is one of the last applications that I have uh, covered in this video uh, so you can see over here this is thionyl uh, you know this over here is your thionyl um, <clears throat> we are basically synthesizing thionyl benzene okay uh, which is a semiconducting polymer okay it's a semiconducting polymer and it is used in you know basically organic light emitting diodes this is the future photovoltaics and organic molecules in, as transistors or as diodes this is the next future because silicon will soon be replaced by organic molecules which are quite cheap and which have higher efficiency than silicon as well so over here you see this is a grignard reagent okay this is our thio thiophene heterocyclic moiety which i have um, you know 
which are shown by the arrow this one over here and uh, so and this is our you know tri substituted iodine and we are using palladium catalyst in this case at room temperature but the reaction time is a lot uh, two, in two days we get this product okay i hope it's clear how, how we got it basically this carbon and this iodine they couple similarly if we use three equivalents of this compound if you use three equivalents then this again will couple over here and this again will couple over here and finally we'll get our thionyl benzene right so this is your kumada coupling i hope you found this video useful if you did please like this video share it with your friends and thank you so much for watching um, you know i read all your comments so just keep commenting i read each and every comment and i really really get motivated when i read your comments thank you so much for that and i'll see you in the next video